Once upon a time, we had a train ship about the React.js. It was a perfect introduction to the framework, but one uh, thing that was lacking, it was a bigger touch to the React internals, how it's really working inside. Because uh, when we are talking with the AngularJS developers, uh, there is common knowledge about the JGS loop, uh, internals of the Angular, and I have an uh, impression that even experienced React developers, in truth, don't know how it's really working inside. So I decided that it's a good time to start digging, and I want to share with you with my findings. I will start with how React presents its components. Because a simple parsing of the HTML is not good enough. For example, we have our first div with uh, some content, and this content, for a part of it, will be wrapped in the bold tag, a different part on the different uh, subtree will be wrapped in the italic tag, and if we'll be wanting to join it uh, automatically, we'll get something which is not correct. So that's why React is using to produce its virtual DOM ASIC syntax tree. But uh, there is also a problem with diffing to different trees because current our state of art solution has complexity n to the power of 3. And for the uh, nodes of the HTML, for the HTML DOM, when we have, that's no, it's common to have more than 1,000 nodes. It means that in the corner case, you will have 1,000 multiplied by 1,000 and multiplied by 1,000. It's definitely more than we want for render in one, uh, one screen frame. That's why clever people from the React, they are Facebook guys, decided that they need something more heroist heroistic and more simple. So decided that they will to make a two assumptions. The first of it is that when we'll be swapping a type of the node, probably its whole subtree will also change. So whenever in our tree, we are setting state of the specific nodes, its whole subtree is possible place to the render on the end of the event loop. And uh, if a change with the node level by the level is uh, that we change one component to the different type, different state, React assume that whole subtree is ready to be trashed and re-render from the scratch. But when uh, we have the same type of the component, the same state, it's going level by the level and checking if there will be gain of performance if we'll do simple diff. Piece of cake, but not at all, because uh, Sometimes we don't only want to compare two components. We also want to, for example, add component to the list. And if we will do that on the end of the list, that's no problem. That's okay, it's simple addition. But if we want to do that in the middle, it's a more difficult thing, because uh, we will moving all rest element to the bottom. So, list is very different than the one we had before. There is option uh, to count a minimal amount of the needed iteration. We have a specialistic algorithm for that, but we don't want to use them on the web environment. So, a second assumption is that by providing a unique keys, 
we can easily move our elements inside a specific data structure. So whenever we have a K attribute on our React components, we are putting them to the hash map and React can optimize it. So whenever we have a list with a keys, a keys are referencing to each other and adding another element in the middle is just passing the reference from one computer to the other, like on the screen. There is one more specific case. We don't, don't always want to make a deep search of the changes. Sometimes we know that nothing change in the subtree of the component. There is a solution for that. React uh, has a method should component update, which is checking if we need to re-render the subtree. Maybe it can be reused at all, but uh, there's one problem. This method can need to be run each time. That's why it's, uh, it's, it's running is really expensive. So that's why immutable JS, another wonderful library from the Facebook, is that good pair from the React. Because if we have uh, immutable collections, whenever we are uh, changing something, we get a new element. And new element means a new reference. And it's only swapping them if we need to change a whole subtree. I hope you like this uh, big picture introduction to the React.js uh, internals, how it works. Um, I want to, I suggest you to read more about it, both on the React uh, documentation and article in the internet, but uh, for a people who want to know more academic approach to the problem that people from the React uh, resolve by simple heuristic, there are two articles uh, which is worth reading. Thank you very much. Wow.